Now, I told you guys to not count out OpenAI as they just released their newest model called O1, internally known as Project Strawberry or QSTAR. Now, this is a new LLM trained with reinforcement learning to perform complex reasoning, and it's stated to be as smart as a PhD student. Now, what's insane to me is the fact that the benchmarks show that the performance of this new model is insanely higher than GPT-4 Omni. Now, when I say when a new model comes out, it's obviously given that it will outpace its predecessor. But in this case, it's putting its predecessors in the dust. Like you can see from the screenshot in math competition benchmarks or competition for code or even PhD level science questions, it is putting GPT-4 Omni in the dust. So they didn't just come out with one model. They came out with two. They have the first preview model as well as the O1 mini model. And they're available currently through ChatGPT if you have the plus plan. Now, currently what stands out the most to me is the fact that the it's basically improved in answering PhD level physics. And this is quite remarkable because it shows how advanced this model is in comparison to anything that's out there. This hands down is outperforming any model that's out there at the moment. And this is why I told many of you guys do not count out OpenAI. This O1 model is trained with reinforcement learning to think before responding using private chain of thought. Now, the longer it thinks, the better it's going to perform on reasoning tasks, and it introduces a whole new dimension of scaling. So they're no longer limited to pre-training, as it's now going to be able to scale inference compute as well, which is really cool. Something to also note is that their O1 models aren't always better than GPT-4 Omni, as many tasks don't actually require complex reasoning, and sometimes it's not worth waiting for O1's response when a quick GPT-4 Omni answer can do so. Now, one of the reasons they're releasing O1 preview is to identify which use cases gain traction and where the model needs actual improvement, basically. Now, before we get started, I definitely recommend that you take a look at the Patreon page so that you can access the new subscriptions that we'll be releasing this week. So from reading this blog post, there's a couple of things I want to mention. And like I said, this is a model that thinks before going into inference. A couple of things I want to note is that these smaller models that OpenAI has been releasing are smarter at thinking. And that's where you don't actually need to have a massive model to reason effectively, which is why they released this smaller base model. These language models are going to be able to often memorize facts like answering trivia. But O1 is going to separate from these different models because it focuses more on reasoning from knowledge. It focuses on the smaller reasoning core that can call external tools like web browsers or code verifiers when they actually need it. So this can basically reduce the need for huge amounts of pre-training and it's obviously going to save a lot more in terms of compute. Now, another thing I want to state is that more compute is at inference is going to be more useful than less at pre-training. And with the O1, it's going to be much more like this in terms of computing power because it's now used during inference when the model is to generate the response rather than during the pre-training process. So this is where the model is going to simulate various strategies before picking the best one, similar to how AlphaGo's Monte Carlo tree search is basically utilized. Something cool to note is that their shifting focus has changed to inference scaling, which is really great to see because now it looks like they have caught on to the shift as research like has basically backed it. And it shows that models actually improve drastically when repeated sampling is done during the inference. Like we've seen with the deep sleep coder models, where it jumps from 15.9% to 56% in terms of accuracy by just sampling 250 times. Now, this guy is definitely a genius. And the team he has deployed has definitely done a great job with this O1 release because it could become a self-improving system as wild as you may think about it. This is a model that has the ability to reason if correct and the entire search process becomes a valuable training data, meaning that this is a positive feedback loop that can enhance future versions of the model, much like the AlphaGo system of learning from its own games. So this was a really cool thing that they have developed and I definitely see this being a huge step forward towards AGI. 
Now, you can actually access this through an API, or you can start playing around with it within your ChatGPT Plus plan. So if you're interested, definitely get started with it and start to play around with it to see how this model actually performs. For some reason, I can't access it through GPT at the moment, but here are some couple of videos that will explain the capabilities of this model. It's truly amazing. So the example I'm, I'm going to try out is a almost a code cracking of a badly corrupted Korean sentence. So here I paste in the, the prompt and I'm asking the model to translate this badly corrupted Korean sentence to uh, English. And as you can see, this is not a, a valid Korean uh, sentence. So let's start with the existing model GPT-40 and see how it does. The model is just not able to understand this text, which is a valid response because this is not a valid language. So what's happening here? Uh, so Korean is an interesting language in that when we form a character, we can combine vowels and consonants, sometimes put the consonant at the bottom and so on. One way to corrupt this character is to add in some extra unnecessary consonants to it. And that combination is so unnatural to native speakers, so they can just, when they see it, uh, just automatically undo that change and understand the text. So this is character level corruption. We can do that at the phrase level, we can also do that at the sound level, and so on. People have come up with various methods like this, and I found them really interesting, so I adopted a few of them to create this example. So if you understand Korean, this part that I'm highlighting now, you can read it off as a 지구상 어떤 번역기도 읽을 수 없지만 한국인들은, and so on. I'm not going to read off the whole thing, but this is the idea. Koreans can read it, but the models find it so difficult to understand. So now let's go on to our new model, uh, 01 preview, and see if reasoning can help solve this problem. So I typed in the same thing. Unlike GPT-40, this model starts thinking, uh, thinking through this problem before outputting the answer. So it's decoding the garbled text. So that's actually the, uh, the right approach because this is, I gave a, a translation task, but the underlying task is actually decoding this problem. So it started off with the right path, and then I'm examining this text, deciphering the text, deciphering is actually the right verb to use here, enhancing the translation, and then actually it starts unpacking some part of it. So here, 몸과 자음의 변상, 다양한 변환으로, and so on. This is already an decrypted part of this and then once the model figures it out that part everything else is just easy enough so it does the other sentence too and so let's close this thought so it thought for 15 seconds the final translation the model output is no translator on earth can do this but koreans can easily recognize it there's a method of encrypting hangul by inputting various transformations of vowels and consonants it creates a way to make it look different on the surface, it can even confuse AI models. I think this is a perfect translation of the sentence. So this illustrates how general purpose reasoning models like O1 Preview can help seemingly unrelated uh, question, questions like this, which is almost like a code cracking. So um, I hope this illustrates how reasoning can be a powerful tool for, for solving your problems. I want to show an example of a coding prompt that O1 Preview is able to do, but previous models might struggle with. And the coding prompt is to write the code for a very simple video game called Squirrel Finder. And the reason O1 Preview is better at doing prompts like this is when it wants to write a piece of code, it thinks before giving the final answer. So it can use the thinking process to plan out the structure of the code, make sure it fits the constraints, so let's try pasting this in. And to give a brief overview of the prompt, um, the game Squirrel Finder basically has a koala that you can move using the arrow keys. Um, strawberries spawn every second and they bounce around. And you want to avoid the strawberries. After three seconds, a squirrel icon comes up and you want to find the squirrel to win. And there are a few other instructions like um, putting OpenAI in the game screen and displaying instructions before the game starts, etc. So first you can see that the model thought for 21 seconds before giving the final answer. And you can see that during its thinking process, it is gathering details on the game's layout, mapping out the instructions, setting up the screen, etc. 
And so here's the code that it gave, and I will paste it into a, uh, into a window, and we'll see if it works. So you've seen there's instructions, um, and let's try to play the game. Oh, the squirrel came very quickly. But, oops, this time I was hit by a strawberry. Let's try again. You can see that the strawberries are appearing. Uh, and let's see if I can win by finding the squirrel. Looks like I won. I, I really like this puzzle because it's been a puzzle from a computer game I've been playing as a kid. The riddle reads as a princess is as old as the prince will be when the princess is twice as old as the prince was when the princess's age was half the sum of their present age. Even, it even reads hard, it's, it's kind of like it takes a while for a human to understand and translate this problem into, into how to actually solve it. The question is what is the, the age of the prince and the princess? And so let's ask our, our, our reasoning model how it will do with that. And again, we can, we can observe a little bit uh, its, its thinking process through like, decoding the problem, uh, understanding what are, what, what are the equations that the, that the ages of prince and princess need to, need to fulfill. And let's see for, for how long the model will need to think about it. Just, just similarly as humans sometimes think longer and shorter than a problem, our models do, do the same thing. And after a while, I hope, I hope the model will give, us, will give us a correct answer here. The model is still thinking about it. It's not the easiest problem, but we got the answer just right now. The model also like walks us through the solution. In this case, what are the variables, what are the conditions, how to translate this, this problem into, into English, and how to solve those equations where they are just, just, just real time. Together, together, we, we even got a message about verification, and we got we, we got the answer where, where where the prince's age is six times k for any any natural number k, and princess's age is eight times k, that natural age, which also like is is, is is the correct solution for the for the problem in that game. And that's about it for previewing this O1 model. I wanted to do a lot of tests on this, but I believe I should be doing that for my next video where I'm going to be covering it further in detail. But with that thought, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and you got some sort of value out of it. I'll leave all the links I use in today's video in the description below. Make sure you follow me on the Patreon as well as on Twitter so that you can gain access to daily AI news. And make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought, guys, have an amazing day, spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.